Okay, so my apologies. This isn't written up nicely, nor is it recorded or planned or anything. But I was just going to give insight into my strategy for the On the Rocks race as a part of the Magic Aid of the Buckyball Racing Club. Um, hosted by Psykit, originally made by Osric. Very cool race, very fun. Sorry that I broke it. We'll see how that turns out. Um, so this is a cool race, basic overview. You start at Rebuy Prospect, Buckyball's Homes. You need to go to five places. You pick up five Buckyball beer mats from the first, from, from Rebuy Prospect. You have to sell one at each place, pick up five tons of water at Jackstown, and bring it back to make ice for drinks. Cool. Simple enough, right? But Osric was like, hmm. What if I could make an equalizer? So this equalizer looks at ship's jump range and adjusts your time by how much jump range they have. So there are three that, uh, this is what happens when you stream instead of recording. There are three things. This is the first thing I'm going to talk about. Um, but there are three ways to break this race. And this is a good equalizer. Um, it worked great for the first race. I think I was busy then. I don't know if I was head down in Factorio or what sort of game I was playing four years ago when this race came out. But I think I only ran it once. Um, I didn't do regulation. I just did unlimited. I looked at my spreadsheet for it and I looked at different ships, but I, I don't know how I missed it this time. The key thing is, well, let's talk about the other things first because Commander Sulu had a great idea. Four years ago, um, I don't think Guardian boosters were in the game, which is why this only goes up to 65 light years. I might be wrong about that. Um, but also there weren't double engineered FSDs. And so Commander Sulu came up with a Diamondback Explorer that was like 75 light years. And so that got two more jumps out of this. So that's, that's the start of a very good idea. So theoretically, he should be running a minute 30 under the equalizer. Now that balances out because the Diamondback Explorer is not the best ship in Super Cruise or the fastest ship. But as we see, we'll see later, that doesn't necessarily um, make all the difference. Um, so that was the first way you could break it. I salute that. That is an amazing idea. Uh, the other thing I noticed in the rules, um, another thing that's been added to the game is Super Cruise Assist. And I looked through it, I searched the page, Super Cruise Assist is not banned. I messaged the race organizer, asked, is Super Cruise Assist allowed? Super Cruise Assist and Open and Unlimited was not in the game at this time, so it is allowed. And Super Cruise Assist, as we'll see, allows you to drop faster onto places, which is nice. It makes up for not having great Super Cruise. And here's how the race breaks. So the equalizer is based on your current, not minimum, not maximum, your current jump range in the outfitting screen when unladen with a full fuel tank. And buckyballers are known for fuel shenanigans. And that's what we're doing now. So if we think, hmm, what is the way to get a ship to jump further than it would with a full fuel tank? The answer is obviously empty the fuel tank. But that doesn't get you a lot more range unless you make a ship entirely out of fuel tanks. So that's what I did. And so here's my spreadsheet. This stuff, which is just like me making up estimated times and doing stuff with uh, EDTS. This is from four years ago, so this top part. And I basically found out, unsurprisingly, that Osric's equalizer was perfect. The estimated time adjusted for all classes was 26 minutes and either 50 or 5 seconds, and it wasn't that different. Um, That's just because EDTS thinks you can fly faster. 
it's fine. Uh, and this was the jumps and whatnot. But this time, this time I noticed the fuel thing. And I was like, ha, huh, a loophole. This is what Brewski likes. Space bears love loopholes. They just sit in loopholes and eat them like donut holes. Um, and so I copied this here and I began thinking, okay, I looked at top range ships um, and the biggest ships. Cause I thought that maybe since those had the most fuel, those would work. I think in the end, it's kind of based on proportion of max possible fuel to uh hull weight. Um, but I, I'm not actually that I didn't have the programming chops to load all the ships into the game. But as you can see, I tried a selection of like 10 ships here and I would design a build that I felt was good. And I would note down the unladen range versus the max range. And then I would note down the Delta. So if the cutter has an unladen range of 24.91, that gives it a bonus of four minutes, 30 seconds. And if it's actual range, its max range is 39.92. That means it's flying around the course. It should be picking up three minutes and four minutes, 30 seconds plus three minutes gives you seven minutes, 30 seconds. I also noted like its speed and its boost and it eventually it's fuel to tonnage ratio. So seven minutes, 30 seconds seemed pretty good. The type 10 only gets a differential of four minutes, 30 seconds. The type nine gets seven and a half minutes, but it's significantly slower on the speed and boost. The dolphin, depending upon the build, didn't look that great. It only is getting you five minutes. The eye courier is not bad, um, but we'll see the problems with the smaller ships later. DBX is not good at all because the problem is when you weight down the ship like a DBX to take it to a lower range, you are reducing the proportion of the ship that is fuel tanks. And that you want as much of the ship to be fuel tanks as possible because that's fake weight, which allows you to artificially lower your range. Um, Crate Phantom was decent. The hauler looked amazing at nine minutes. So I think I began with the hutter, cutter and I only looked at the hauler later. The adder was good, the orca was good good um all of these might be viable but the cutter sounded cool and there were a bunch of imperial ships at the top of the list so i began by trying out the cutter i went here i filled it with fuel tanks a cargo rack a super cruise assist um max thrusters max frame shift drive close to a max power distributor all to push it down to 25 light year range when filled with fuel and it should be going at 40 light year range when not filled with fuel. This is very cool. Um, so I built this cutter. I took it out. I made three or four runs. Uh, the problem with this cutter, we'll see in this clip here, is that you take it in and it just, it's, ha I don't, I don't know quite how the calculations work, but it does not want to stop. Um, and even if you boost away, it just goes pop. Um, it's very delicate. Apparently if you make an empty cutter and stuff it with fumes, it explodes. Very strange. Uh, and this was another time that I was trying to land at an asteroid base with my, uh, small child commenting and we were trying to go, he was very impressed. We are not going to go in Iraq. Why are we not going to go in Iraq? The cutter just doesn't fit well. And it was garbage. It was a garbage build. And so I eventually abandoned that after losing more than, I think, 50 million credits to rebuys. Um, and next I was going to try... Why do I have that twice? The hauler because I was looking at my other spreadsheet and I was like, ooh, the hauler, because I tried more ships, the hauler is going to be nine minutes faster than it should be because you can get it down to a range of 24.95. I guess this isn't exactly my final build, but this is close enough, while having a max range of 45.62. Now here we get to the other spreadsheets. Here's the one for the cutter doing a bunch of EDTS stuff. These are from the runs I made, because the problem is 
you can't have this be full of fuel. You can't refuel. So like the best run I ever made with the cutter was like an adjusted 36 minutes or something. It was trash. Um, because you had to plot out and figure out like refuel 20%. But on the cutter, refueling 20% got you 84 tons of fuel, uh, which is a lot. And so keeping your range down enough, that was for 10%. Like you see these notes had too much fuel to jump, had too much fuel to jump. It was just very hard. And the hauler was even worse because with the hauler, um, you can see the hauler has like these, let's see how much fuel has 22 tons of fuel on a 14 ton hull. This ship is so tiny. There's literally nothing there. Um, So that should be great, right? But so the cargo racks take up a decent chunk of it. The supercruise assist takes up some more space. But the other problem is, if you come down here and you look at like this FSD profile, you carry five tons of cargo and seven tons of fuel, and you're not even at, you're nowhere near 43 light years anymore, but just five tons and two tons of fuel. You need one ton every jump. You're down to 36 light years. And so like I started trying to plot the systems and figure out like the fueling stuff. And after a few hours of poking that, I just determined that the hauler wouldn't be able to compete. Cause you look at this, it's max range is 46 with two tons of fuel and five cargo. You're down to 37. You just, you cannot make it work, especially since the longest legs are that first leg of five jumps ish. And that last leg of four jumps. And because the race was designed cleverly, you're going to have at least five cargo for each of those. Because you've got to haul out the mats and haul back the ice. Um, so then, a couple days ago, I was like, well, I've tried a small ship. And I've tried a big ship. And maybe like Goldilocks, I have to try the middle bowl of porridge and try a medium ship. And so since uh, Alec was talking about how cool the ass scout was, I looked up at that. I was like, hey, you can get an ass scout. And I also abandoned going for the 25 light year range because I wanted to make my races a bit faster. And I also thought I had to pile too much weight on to get down to that 25 light year range. It kind of works with the hauler, but not so much with the other stuff. Um, and so we went for 35 light years. And if we look at our jump comparisons, if you're at 35 light years, but you can actually jump like 50, that nets you five minutes. Now that's not as big as the difference between 25 light years and 40, but I, I think it's going to be big enough to make a difference. Um, so we stuff it full of fuel tanks. We have our cargo rack. We have our super cruise assist. And it's the heat sink launchers. This is because I'd been running a lot of regulation and overheating. I was just wanted some ice cubes to cool me down. Obviously, I won't need those because I can't take a fuel scoop because that to have any fuel scoop that would work would take a bunch of my fuel off. So that would not be great. But I could get an unladen range of 34.96 with the max range of 49.02. And then when we go look at our spreadsheet, um, I started doing fuel calculations and trying to figure out how much I would use up. It turned out it didn't work. And the ASP Scout, man, it would have been so cool if the ASP Scout had placed well in a race because, like, it's just famous for being kind of a crappy ship. But after flying it, I can see it's pretty neat. And I do love the ASP. And the ASP Scout, that agility and that braking power, that's just very nice. Um... But the problem is the dolphin was better. And I do have a soft spot for the dolphin. I think it's a great little ship and it runs gold. And I named mine Echo after the old dolphin in the computer game. So I've ended up finally building the dolphin. Dolphin has more fuel, 80 tons as compared to 96. So it's got a higher proportion. It gets you that max range. It makes it really easy to run. I think it's the... 46 light year range. I figured out 46 to 47 light year range was the breaking point. I finally managed to get EDTS thanks to some help from a friend loaded into a programming environment. So now I can have my little notepad here with my EDTS thing and load it up and then just run it. And I got a new computer a few months ago with like a screaming processor. Um, 
And so these used to take me like five to 20 minutes to calculate, depending on where exactly it is. Now it takes me a few seconds. Uh, so that's been a huge improvement. I don't know if that's from the computer or the programming environment or whatever, but that's all much better. So then I had to figure out, and these are all the fuel calculations, figuring out like just how much fuel the dolphin has at each jump, and then how many times I would have to, um, is this a dolphin? This is the dolphin. Which did I use? I can't even remember. I love spreadsheets, but I am not organized, as you can tell. So fill the dolphin up with these fuel tanks. It's got a max range of 51.08 light years, laden range of 34.95, just small enough to go. And then we'll see how some of its approaches are. Um, because the plotting in the game is crap, um, I then had to like manually plot all of these systems. I, this is not... This is not the sheet I used when I was going. Did I use a scout sheet? Let me maximize this. I don't even know what sheet I had open now when I was running because I didn't go to triangular sector. I went here. Oh, somehow I put it on the Cobra sheet. Yeah, so here's here's the actual stuff I did with the dolphin. And you'll notice like I had some mistakes. Um, so I had to go the first leg, refuel, go to the second leg, don't refuel, because then I had some big jumps to make on that third leg to hide a Kligati and then refuel twice. Then I had to like be at or below 30% fuel at this last stop. Then there I had to fill the mass because there's no scoopies here. Um I had at least one run blown to that. Um, and then I had to like hot scoop the last segment. So that's pretty much the strategy. Um, and I hope you enjoyed finding that loophole. Uh, we can look and see how the run went. I'm going to turn the volume down um, and just kind of speed through it, see if there's anything interesting. Um, so we taking off, I had the default fuel tank plus an extra two tons. I had to test this a lot to make sure it just worked. Um, and then, I mean, this is just standard stuff. This isn't even fancy plotting. Get away from the star. Make sure you're not obscured. Now, here is where the approaches, even with super crews, like these ring approaches were weird. So, I mean, if... I kind of tried to peel around so that I was approaching the asteroid belt perpendicularly because I thought that when I approached it head on, the super cruise assist got confused and multiple times would drop me like 500 kilometers away. Uh, so the amount of focus I have right here is rather large. You can just see me intently staring, trying to figure out how to get perpendicular with it. And then at six seconds, I would I set a shortcut to set my throttle to 70 percent because i don't have a 70 percent detent on my actual throttle um, and then i would coast in and hold my breath that it was going to work because there were multiple times when these drops didn't work uh could they be better probably like but it's hard to get them facing the right way um and we'll skip ahead it was weird that there were so few pads available in these stations because I'm used to getting like maybe pad 12, 13, 36, et cetera, but it's only pad 12 that's there. It's like the only good pad. Um, and so based on the discussion in the Discord, I began selling and refueling or whatever before doing the turnaround, um, which theoretically makes it slightly faster. Although like I'm so slow at some of these menus, I really wonder sometimes. Um, and so there's nothing particularly interesting about these next things. Uh, the approach to free home was tricky. And also going through super cruise, trying to dodge all the other planets. I felt there were really a lot of other planets in the way on, on this race. Um, they're not always, but there were a lot of traps waiting to slow you down with their gravity balls. So this one took a while. 
Um, so here I would try and cut throttle at six seconds because I noticed I was overshooting this a lot. Um, and the other thing was like the alignment of the station is exactly wrong. I feel like the, the entrance is pointing straight away. So I just messed that up and then I pray that I drop. Got it. Um, and here's, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead to, let's see, uh, Big Papa's base. This was another really hard approach that got messed up a lot. So I'd try and go down to get like under the asteroid belt and then approach it perpendicularly. And this was literally just put throttle at 30% with super cruise assist on at five seconds left, take my hands off the controls, and just let the computer work her magic. Um, let's see if this one, I may have had to mess with it because like it gets slowed down by that gas giant so much. Yeah, here you'll see I had to throttle up um, and it's just, it's a real pain that Big Papa's base is a fascinating find. It makes this race brutal because it's got such a hard approach. And you can just get sucked into the gravity well so easily or overshoot it so easily which from the wrong side. Like it's just a mess. And I think I ended up doing a manual drop here. The Super Cruise Assist. Yeah, it was a manual drop. Um, but anyways, had to turn on night vision because that was a problem. I got another run that got eclipsed because the stupid gas giant was in the way. Um, had another landing here. And let's see. Eventually, I had to do a manual plot, but if we... Um, Lone Rock was another tricky approach. So let's watch that. So with Lone Rock... With Super Cruise Assist, I think it was faster. It would do an auto drop, but it, even with Super Cruise Assist, this thing was just super weird. I think I pointed towards it and cut it. So, oh, that was it. I had to steer. Super Cruise Assist wouldn't steer at Lone Rock. So like it would drop, but I was manually steering all the way in, even though it was at 70%. Like it was super weird. So I was overriding the Super Cruise throttle. Like the amount of weird stuff going on with that station is crazy. Um, so then we get to Falcon with Jack's town. Jack's town had a pretty standard approach because it's just orbiting around it. So you can just come in hot and boom, there we go. Uh, it's fun when you like teleport through those, uh, through the asteroids as you're dropping in. Always makes your butt clench a bit. So here's where. I think it may have been faster to go down because this had to have a cell and a buy. I didn't have to refuel or repair, but this is the one where I had to make sure I was at 30% fuel here. Um, and it can't have been 30% of fuel. It was like 30% of a regular tank of fuel. Not so you see how much a jump takes up because this, this dolphin can carry a ludicrous amount of fuel. So I had to go here. And then here, I had to make sure to scoop enough fuel for two jumps because I got stuck at the next sector once, which was unscoopable. Um, and then I managed to make it all the way home to Fullerene. And Fullerene with the Super Cruise Assist has a pretty pretty easy approach too because it's just approaching around a planet. So you're able to drop it down at five seconds and hop it in. There may be a faster way to do Super Cruise approaches. I know there was a race based on those like six months ago, but hell if I can remember something six months old. And so we come in, focusing maybe a little too hard because it's the end of a race and it looks like our time is going to be good. and managed to have a rough but all rightish landing with our dolphin. Dolphin is a sweet little shit. I think it's underrated. And then we fill up that fuel, which takes our range down to 35. We sell our water. Uh, 
I was feeling pretty good at that point. Plan finally came together after trying four different ships and like 12 different runs just to make it maybe more than 12. I don't know. There were lots of ships that exploded or ran out of fuel or other issues. Um, and then let's skip to the outfitting and see it is jump current 35. There you go. Hope you all had an excellent race. Thank you so much, Psykit, for running it. Sorry, Osric, that I broke your equalizer. If you want to brainstorm with me on how to fix it, I can try. Um, and see you all next month.